Okay, this is a video for using the online stats calculator to find probabilities uh, in a normal distribution. So, uh, we've already, you've already seen some of this with uh, the TI-84, and there's a way to use the tables, but uh, this is to avoid tables if you don't have the TI-84, is using this online stats calculator, which I will post its uh, a link to it on WAMAP, so you can use this. Um, if, if you don't have the 84, or even if you do, because this is really handy and it might be simpler for you than the 84. So, let's say you're going to find the probability that, um, that some z-score is greater than 1.5. Now, uh, remember we did a, we had the empirical rule, which if you have an integer value here, like negative 1 or negative 2 or 1, 2, 3, whatever, any integer values in here, you can use the empirical rule as kind of a shortcut. Um, it's not exactly the same. It's just, it's, a, it's an estimate, uh, but uh, all of this is real. All of these are estimates, actually, anyway. But to do this on the calculator, this basically is saying that z has to be greater than 1.5, and of course less than, really, we would say infinity, <laughs> but we can't plug infinity in there. But since we know, if you take a look over here at the uh, uh, normal uh, curve, once you get past 3, this area, I mean, it looks like this is on the line, but there's really a teeny, teeny, tiny, small area there. So this keeps going, but actually if you get really big, Notice the area here, this represents the probability, is the size of this region. As you get out here, the probability just gets really, really small. So you don't need to go all the way to infinity. You can say, like, even just 999 would be good enough. So this basically, these are going to come out to be almost exactly the same. Since you can't put in infinity, we just put in a very large positive number there. So notice we're selecting this, and, and this is assumption, the assumption if you got a z-score, if you're looking for z-scores, you're assuming that the mean is equal to 0 and the standard deviation is equal to 1. Okay, That's the mean. This, by the way, is the Greek letter mu. It's where we get our letter m. It kind of looks like a cursive m if you have a... <laughs> almost like a cursive m. But anyway, that's the... That's the Greek letter mu, and this is the Greek letter sigma. Uh, this means standard deviation. That's the that's where we get our letter S, is the sigma. So anyway, uh, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1, and this calculator defaults. It's always set up to that. But now I need to go from 1.5 to 999, so I'm going to put this in 1.5 here, 1.5, and then 999. And I'm going to calculate that. And there, that gives me 0 0.066. Uh, so that's the probability there, that probability that z is greater than 1.5 is approximately 0 0.066807. You can see it down here. It gives us that answer, which we know that's about 6.7%. You could probably write this as 0 0.0668 on your uh, in your answer. If you this was a question in WAMAP, that would be far enough out to give you um, full credit. So, uh, if they want a percent, you'd say 6.7 percent. So, uh, by the way, um, if you notice over here, they have this p of x less than b or x greater than 8. We could have just selected that, and then notice it automatically pops infinity in over here, right? Which is what we had. You can't really have infinity. It's not a number. But uh, so this would have given us the same thing. And if we hit calculate there, notice it gives us, I recalculated it, it gives us the same number, 0 0.066807. So if you put an x greater than a, it'll automatically say, well, you're going all the way to infinity. Although the program has a big number in there, like 99999 or something. Now, uh, let's say you actually have, you're actually trying to find a probability uh, where it's less, than, it's less than a number. So maybe you're finding the probability that the z-score is less than negative 1.4.
Well, that's going to be almost the same as greater than positive 1.5, because if we put this in here, and in fact, I'll do this less than, notice it goes to negative infinity on that, because here, uh, less than 1.4, right? Here's ne or negative 1.4. Z would be on this side, right? It'd be going this way. And so that goes to negative infinity. So basically, that means Z is between negative infinity, which is not really a number. So I, I never feel comfortable writing that that way, but, and then negative 1.4. And so they have that up here. And now, the, of course, we haven't put a number in there. We have to put in a negative 1.4. And then we hit calculate, and there it is, 0 0.08. Now, that's a little bigger. If that had been 1.5, it would have been exactly the same as the last one, 0 0.0668, right? That's what we got before. But now, since it's 1.4, it's, it's going to be a little bigger because 1.4 is a little more to the right than 1.5 was, right? This 1.5 would be past it, so we'd have less area. So anyway, that gives us an estimate. So that one would be approximately 0 0.080, I guess I'd say 76, something like that. Or you could do 0 0.0808. I'm sure that would be acceptable also. Uh, one map isn't too persnickety, but you should take it out. I mean, it doesn't hurt to take it out a couple extra places, um, to be sure. Some people put all the numbers they can see in, and that's that's not necessary. But okay, now what if you have something that's not an uh, the mean isn't zero and the standard deviation isn't one, and so that wouldn't be a z score anymore. So now let's take a look at that. Let's say we've got. Let's say we want to find the probability that some value x is greater than a 200. Well, if, if that was a z-score, that would be zero. I mean, z over here, look, 200 would be way out here, and there's basically nothing. I mean, if you did that as a z-score, you'd be going from x greater than 200. You'd have 200 in there to infinity. If you calculate that, it's going to show you zero, as you see. But that's not a z-score. This is what if the mean is equal to 190 and the standard deviation is equal to, let's say, 11.5. Uh, uh, now that's a very different problem and we can now so if we looked at that here's what that would look like on a on the graph um 190 would be in the middle and then one two three that should be a little lower there but uh, 11.5 more would be 201.5 right you add you add one standard deviation and then you add another standard deviation so another 11.5 would be 212 right 11.5 and 1.5. Uh, actually, 213. Sorry about that. Got 201.5 and 11.5. That would be 0, carry the 1. That would be point, and then that would be 3, and then 1, 2. So it would be 213. And then another 11.5 would be 224.5. So where's, one, uh, where's 200 in this? It's right about here. Right? Well, we do already know that since that's 50%, I'm just going to give you an estimate here. If it was at one full standard deviation at 201.5, this we know, since this is, uh, in here is 34% using the empirical rule, this would be 16%. So this should be a little bigger than 16%, right? Because we're at uh, less than a standard deviation above the mean. So... Um, I'll remind you, there's a z-score formula. Remember the z-score for 200 would be 200 minus the mean 190 divided by 11.5. So that's 10 divided by 11.5. And that z-score if we take it out to a few places, 0.8 I'll go 0.87. I get 0.869 something. So I'll say 0.87 is the z-score. Um, if you wanted to do all this work, you could. But since it gives you the mean is 190, we could go over here and change that mean to 190, change that standard deviation to 11.5, 
and just put in from 200 to infinity. So we update that and now look at the picture it gives us. And we want to have, this needs to be a 200 here, right? Put in a 200 and now we update it. Uh-oh, something's wrong with that picture. 190, 11.5. Oh, I've got to put in a big number here. Oh, I think I'll do it this way. Let's try this. 200, and let's do 99999, super big number, and then calculate. And there it gives us the picture. That's the picture I had drawn. Right, similar to that. I didn't shade it in, but that's a similar picture. And you can see the area there is 0.19. So it's a little bigger than 16, right? This would have been the empirical if we had, remember the empirical rule, you have to hit right on the standard, one standard deviation or two. You have to have whole numbers. So anyway, that's what you do in that situation. So uh, we can have, there's lots of applications. Where's this? The, uh, let me write the answer here. That's approximately. 0.1923, or about 19.2% approximately. Okay, so let's just do one more real quickly. Um, what if it was a little more application type problem? Let's say, you know, uh, batteries, how long batteries might last. So let's say the average length of time for a battery, let's say the, the mean, the mean uh, uh, life expectancy of a battery is, uh, let's say, uh, 68 months. And then you might ask, what's the, um, and the standard deviation is 3.25 months. So if you buy a battery, What's the probability that the life expectancy of that battery, let's see, what's the probability that it will last more than uh, 60 months, which is five years, right? More than five years. So, I'll say five years. More than five years. So, we can just go down here real quickly and we'll just update this. Uh, oops, I'm going to get that back here. The standard deviation, or the mean was 68. The standard deviation was 3.25. And we wanted to know the probability that it would last more than 60 months. So we'll put a 60 in here. And then calculate that. And notice 60... Yeah, look at that. 60, look, it goes all the way. Oh, this should be updated. There we go, 60. And this should be, I got it. Yeah, I'm not sure why this is not updated. I'm, I'm just going to put it in like this. I prefer this method. This has got to be 60. And then this is going to be just a big number. A whole bunch of nines. And now we calculate it, and it shows us the picture, right? So I always use this, this uh, X is between. That's a lot better strategy. And notice it gives you the picture. Here's 60 months. So really high likelihood, right? Look at that. Almost all of them. Very few would last fewer than 60 months. This is 99.3%. So we would say the probability would be approximately 0.9931, I guess. You want to keep that round that 8 up, the 0 up to a 1 from the 8. Well, that's about 99.31%. So if you if you were a battery manufacturing company and your batteries were lasting 68 months with an average of 3.25 months, you could easily guarantee the battery for 60 months and have almost nobody would be returning the battery before the life of it was over. You would hope if that was if these were pretty accurate numbers. Okay, so that's how that applies to applications. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and you can use this in all the uh, this uh, statistics calculator for lots of things like that. There you go.